Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to show you how to dig worms, but not in the traditional way. We are going to use, see that copper wire right there that we have attached onto this uh, stainless steel potato fork? Is, uh, is for the purpose of attaching electricity to this in order to extract worms from the earth. Now this is dangerous and not advisable, so please don't try this at home. Although a lot of people must have tried it in the past because on one of my previous videos where we tested out the ground rod situation and shorting 120 volts to it, uh, a lot of people have experience with this. Uh, but anyway, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, but real quick, I just wanna mention uh, Olight sent me a couple of flashlights and we're gonna do a review on these guys because we're gonna we're gonna pick some night crawlers in the traditional way and uh, so we'll use these this flashlight is brighter than the headlights on most vehicles it is super super bright and you have a dimmer mode a brighter mode and that's pretty much the main thing when the battery gets low the flashlight will actually vibrate to tell you and the flashlight charges using this super cool magnetic adapter that's just snaps right onto the back. It just wants to go on there and charge. So, I don't know, it's just a really nice flashlight. Lithium ion, it lasts really well, really powerful, really rugged, waterproof. And this is a limited edition. Supposedly they only made a certain quantity of this exact light. This light has been more impressive than I expected it to be. And its throw is excellent. I'm just using my Galaxy S10 cell phone to take this video. It's supposed to be IP something certified, right? So. Theoretically, if we just uh, dunk this in the water here, it'll be fine. Hey, that looks pretty epic, doesn't it? But look at this, that's more epic. A whole stringer full of fish. But yeah, this is totally underwater right now. Can you see this? Totally underwater. Oh, wow, it's bright. It does work. They also sent over this i5T, and this is just a single AA battery flashlight. And this thing is actually really impressive too. If uh, it does have a boost mode, which is 300 lumens. And with the nice clip that it has here on the side, you can clip it in to your pocket either direction. It's a bi-directional uh, clip, so that's kind of handy. Just a nice little light, and I believe that they are, they have a bundle of these two options together uh, that's actually a pretty good sale. So go check that sale out tomorrow morning, or tonight at midnight, I think is when it starts, uh, Eastern time. So I'll link to these right at the very top of the description, the top link right there. If you click on that, that'll bring you over to their sale page. Now, even if you choose to buy something that's not on that exact sale, when you check out, use the discount code BEN in the promo code box when you're checking out, and that should give you a 10% discount on your order. All right, let's uh, dig some worms. Now, I thought we'd just take a couple scoops with the potato fork here and just see how many worms we can get just by digging them out manually. So there's one small worm. Oh, there's one more right there. There's another one. So we took about three scoops and found about three or four worms. So uh, obviously it's a lot more manual labor than, than picking them up off the ground. So let's just go a couple feet away and see if they want to come out of the ground directly if we uh, give them a little bit of juice here. So we'll just go ahead and choose a spot here where the grass is a little bit shorter. Or the creeping charlie rather, we have a major creeping charlie infestation problem. But anyway, so we'll just go ahead and step this guy down. And I think we'll step it down kind of as far as we can just because we want to have as much surface contact area as possible. We're just using 12 gauge wire and a wire nut. And coming across the ground, we've got a switch right there. And then into the panel here, we just have a hook to a standard 20 amp breaker that's non-GFCI, so it shouldn't trip. Now I'm really curious how many amps this is gonna draw. Uh, as you guys remember on the ground rod video, we were drawing close to 10 amps, but that was a lot more surface area than this. My prediction is gonna be about three amps. Uh, if I had to guess, but maybe even less than that. The ground is pretty wet. We did just get some rain the last couple days, so we'll just see what it does. All right, let's power it up. So it looks like we're drawing 1.7 amps. That's uh, going through the dirt 
and using the dirt as the return path. But we'll just give it a couple minutes here and see if any worms start to emerge from the ground. Oh, there's one right there. So a couple worms did come out of the ground, uh, but it's kind of hard to see in this grassy area. So we're going to move over into where there's a little bit more just uh, plain dirt and see if we can get them to come out of the ground over there where we can see them a little bit better. So I'm going to shut off the power before I touch anything and then we'll move it over. We got zero amps, so this is not being powered right now. It's actually really stuck. There we go. And we'll take it out here. I'll go turn the power back on. Here we go. Hey, there's that three amps that I was expecting. So I don't know if that means that we're just getting a better connection with the ground right here, or what the deal may be. Ooh, do you see that guy? One worm popped out of the ground right there. It's a really tiny one, but it is a worm nonetheless. The little guy right there. Oh my goodness, they're coming out all over the place back here. Look behind the... Are you guys seeing that? Oh my word! So what I can see right now is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's a bunch of like tiny ones around. There's a couple decent sized ones right over there. So it definitely looks like it it causes them to, to come out of the ground for a pretty decent radius. If we measure the difference of voltage potential just a couple of inches apart, you can see right there, that's about six volts going this way. Well, you can see that he's crawling this direction, so from his head to his tail, there's only about three volts there. But if we get these perfectly in line so that they're basically the same difference distance away from the pitchfork, since that's our source, and our voltage gradient is from here coming out, it's actually zero, or very close to zero volts difference. But if I just rotate these, now it's four volts, three volts. Someone asked the question, is the voltage gradient a 360 degree gradient, or is it between the electrode, which is the pitchfork in this situation, back to wherever the source is? So the source is that direction, right over there, like 20 feet away is our uh, transformer. So let's just go ahead and check and we'll just kind of do a simple test here. We'll attach one of our probes to the electrode and then we'll just kind of work our way around it. Obviously the electrode is flat this direction so uh, let's uh, go ahead and just check it right here. So we're about six inches away on this side and we're at 65 volts about six inches away on this side 79 volts, six inches away on this side, 63 volts. I'm obviously not measuring this, so, and over here, 75 volts. So it must have something to do with the way this isn't a round object. So we'll go out about this far. We're at 103 volts. Now we'll go all the way over here. 100 volts, all the way back here, 105, all the way over here, 98. So that wasn't very precise, but from what I can tell, it is a 360 degree voltage gradient. It's not uh, just out 
it's not just a gradient going back from the electrode to the source, it's going uh, basically connecting to the ground evenly all the way around. Let's move this down just a little bit and uh, we'll do one more test and just see how long it takes them to come out and I'll do kind of like a time lapse of the ground. Okay, we're turning it on in three, two, one. So we're just over five minutes now and it just seems like depending on where you uh, try for the worms uh, you'll have better or worse luck. This spot's not quite as good but you can see we've got several that would be decent for fishing there. Now the important thing to note is that before you would pick any of these up uh, you should really turn off the power and if as long as they've wriggled out of their hole and are you know an inch or two away from it they're not going to go down immediately so you should still be able to get a hold of them before they go back down but just turn the power off before you pick them up uh, just because it's not a good idea to be very close to that that uh, electrode while it's energized for obvious reasons all right let's try one more time just in the regular yard <laughs> So we're coming outside here, we're going to go pick some night crawlers using the flashlights. I'm kind of thinking we're going to end up using this uh, smaller light for the most part because the big light might just be a little bit too much, but we will use a little bit of both just to see how it goes. Alright, so with night crawlers they can like hear you coming, so you have to walk really quietly. Oh, I see one. I'm gonna turn on the O light and see what he does. The Warrior X Pro is coming on. Yeah, it's definitely too bright. He's like, what the heck? I thought it was night. You're pretty good. So, in about, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes of nightcrawler picking. This is how many night crawlers we're able to get. Come see it. Aren't they cool? Good grief. Bully. Are you proud of He's them? so jealous. <laughs> I should wake him up and tell him to come on. Oh, they're disgusting. So you basically just sneak up on them and they're just like laying there and then you grab them. So that was pretty interesting, that small little difference in potential and voltage across their little body inside of the ground, you know, as we saw, could be up to like four volts or so. So that's uh, 
a decent amount of annoyance, at least enough to get them to surface. But it didn't seem like we got very many big ones for some reason, which was interesting. Ultimately, it was still better uh, going with the good old fashioned go out at night and uh, slowly pull them out one by one. I just want to reiterate that you really just shouldn't use that electric method for gathering worms. It's just not the safest thing in the world. So just dig some worms or uh, go pick some at night and that's a much better method. All right, I want to just uh, finish out the review of these uh, flashlights here from Olight. So we'll start by looking at the Warrior X Pro since that's kind of the main product that we want to talk about. Uh, here are some of the specifications, our max 2250 lumens and of course they do have their quality five year warranty promise. If you want to take the time to pause and read what's on the back of the box, this is what's there. And right here with our uh, lumen output, you can see that total output of 2,250 lumens, 1,000 lumens, or 300 lumens. And I think that that has to do with just, uh, it can only put out that 2,250 for a short time when the battery is fully charged. Who is calling me? It's Ruben. Hey there. Hey, um, mom just called. I don't know, she said something about the guy that I sold the tiller to. I think she means the lawnmower. Okay. Maybe he's brought it back or something. So. Well, he wouldn't I don't have brought. Know, I, huh? He wouldn't have brought it back to your house. And right there, you can see the different contents and accessories that are available for this particular product. This box has a magnetic closure. Whoa! Oops. And inside of the box, obviously, we have the Warrior X Pro itself, and it comes with this optional uh, lanyard that you can put around your wrist, which is nice, especially for when you're like out fishing or something. And right here is the end switch. This is all metal, which is kind of nice. It's not a rubber uh, switch that's going to wear out uh, necessarily. If we do a light press on it, that uh, brings on the dim mode of 300 lumens. You can see we can still see that pretty bright uh, here in broad daylight, or it's a little bit overcast right now, but still pretty pretty bright out. And then if we press it the rest of the way, it brings it on to the high mode, which is that 2,250 lumens. So that is some serious output there. It's You can feel the heat on your hand. And the head of the flashlight here does get warm pretty quickly, because that's the most important thing and the most difficult thing for flashlight manufacturers is heat dissipation because if you don't dissipate the heat properly it will eventually kill those LEDs. So you can see they have these cuts uh, made into this aluminum and this thing is substantial. It's pretty heavy and I think that's part of it is that they have a significant heat sink to get rid of the heat. Now this uh, rim on the inside right here it does glow in the dark. I don't really know what the advantage of that would be other than it's just kind of cool. Another thing that's neat about it is uh, when the battery is getting low, it'll actually vibrate. When you first turn it on, it'll go zzz, zzz, or just zzz one time to tell you what the battery level is. And it, uh, I only experienced that once when I first got it because of course I turned it on before I charged it. You're supposed to charge it before you turn it on, but I don't know, is that really true? And let me just show you what's inside of it here quick. So there's our end cap comes off just like that. And inside of that is our lithium ion battery, 3.6 volt, 5,000 milliamp hours. So I don't know uh, how much these are to replace, but theoretically you'll really never have to replace them. Uh, oh, and then you can replace this collar here. Pull this uh, back cap off, it just kind of slides out over those O-rings. And then I think you have to remove this clip and then we can put this collar on here, which is a rubber grip and then we can replace that uh, battery and now we have a rubberized grip on here which is pretty comfortable to hold and I, I don't know maybe some of you can explain to me why that's uh, beneficial and your lanyard attaches to this ring here so if you want the lanyard you need to use this particular ring and uh, here's the battery charger it is a USB charger, so you can plug it into a battery pack or whatever USB charging solution that you have. And it can accept up to two amps of charging, so it will actually charge that light pretty fast. And so the way that that connects is it just snaps right onto the back. You almost, uh, it's like hard to keep it from snapping on, so like even if I try to put it on backwards again here, it just wants to flip around and, and charge the flashlight. So that's probably one of my favorite things is just the how nice that charging mechanism is. It's kind of silly, but it's just so satisfying to just go whoop 
and it turns red, I believe, while it's charging, and when it's finished charging, it turns green. So that's pretty much it for the Olight Warrior X Pro Super Tactical Thrower Limited Edition 2250 lumen flashlight. I, I like it a lot more than I thought I would, and uh, for the price, you're getting a lot for your money, in my opinion. Um, I'll also link to like the top uh, equivalents from like Surefire and some of the other top flashlight brands in the description if you guys want to kind of compare. I'll see if I can find like a 2000 lumen um, similar rechargeable flashlight to kind of compare. Two minutes at 2,250 lumens, 100 minutes at 1,000 lumens, and 23 minutes at 300 lumens. One other thing that's kind of handy or could be handy in certain situations is uh, the fact that this end of the flashlight is magnetic and does stick to stuff pretty strongly. Unfortunately, it's not quite strong enough to hold it straight out, but the magnet is strong enough to be able to hold itself up. This does come in two colors, this uh, limited edition camouflage color and then also a gray color which I really like as well. Oh and it does come with this case and it has a hole in the bottom which I'm guessing is so that it doesn't melt. So you can see if I turn this on you can see that there's that hole in the bottom of the case and uh, obviously it's very important that you don't accidentally turn on the flashlight. I think that's also why there's a little hole in the top right here. So I don't know for sure, but it's a fairly nice case, but I kind of doubt that I'll be using it. It has a nice magnetic closure, as you can see there. Now this is a pretty inexpensive uh, flashlight. This thing is, I think, around 30 bucks. Uh, the i5T, is that EOS? Simple but special <laughs> light. And actually this thing is really cool. At first I thought it was just kind of a basic standard uh, flashlight where you press it once and it, it is what it is. But it actually does have two modes. You can see right here, 300 lumens or 30 lumens. So that I think that 300 down to 30 is uh, like if you leave it on high. So if I tap it once, that's low. And if I tap it again, it'll shut it off and tap it again, it should bring it into high mode. There's high mode. And uh, so what I think the case is, is that as it's turned on to high mode like it is right now, the longer it's on, that battery is going to slowly drain. This is just one single AA battery in here, and the, the lumens will drop all the way down to 30 lumens at the end of 2 hours and 30 minutes. But yeah, you can see the different uh, specifications there. It's IPX8, so you could submerge this thing underwater as well. It's 2.12 ounces, including the battery. And here is the flashlight itself. It's a pretty nice body to it. It feels really substantial and quality. Uh, it has this dual angle clip so you can clip it into your pocket in either direction. Uh, so that is handy. I'll probably be clipping it in this way uh, with the tail switch up. Uh, and then the tail switch, it feels good. It's a little bit stiff. I don't know if I love it 100%, but it is pretty nice. So there it is on the dim mode, the 15 lumen mode. And there it is on the 300 lumen mode. And you can almost feel a little bit of heat from it. Again, we're out in the daylight here, so that is nice and bright. I really like this dimmer mode. It's handy for when you want a little bit less light. We actually used it in the dim mode uh, some for picking worms. So, yeah, really handy. And real quick, we'll just do the teardown of this thing. This clip is removable. It just snaps off like that. And then we can remove the cap on the back. And right now I do have a rechargeable battery in here. All right, that's all there is to see for this guy. Now, if you guys are interested in picking up one of these lights, they have a really good sale going on. If you see this video late, you can still use the coupon code BEN at checkout for 10% off of your order. And I think that's for non-sale items. I don't think it works for your, uh, for the super sales or whatever they call them. So just use the coupon code BEN and uh, you'll be able to save a little bit of money. Again, link right at the top of the description for these flashlights if you are interested. Real quick, you guys, I wanted to throw a poll right up here. Click on this poll and let me know, do you want me to uh, continue to implement uh, product type reviews into my existing content or is that too distracting? Because uh, I don't want to detract from these videos where we kind of are doing electrical experiments, but at the same time, I do have products that I am excited about that I'd love to show you guys and can sometimes get you discounts on. So just let me know what you think about that. I'll put a couple different options in that poll. Thanks a ton for sitting through this entire video. Uh, if you made it to the end, 
put hashtag awesome in the comments down below that I, so that I know that you did actually watch all the way to the very end of this video. All right, if you want to keep learning with me, uh, I'll put a couple of videos right here on the screen and we will do that right over there. So click on those and we'll see you over there in just a few seconds. Thanks a ton for watching and we'll see you in the next one.